All right, hey everybody, welcome to Free Trying to Post episode f -f -f 45, the same number as the current U.S. president. And I just lost Ari on the phone, but I am back. Are you there, bud? Yeah, I'm back. All right, I don't know why it that's dropped weird. out, but I don't that's know okay. Either. That's okay. We're in it. We're up doing it. We're talking. There's Baja Joe's driving loud motorcycles outside my house. Gross. But we got we got good mics. We upgraded Ari, so now we're all should be sounding all beautiful now. Hopefully. I hope so. But we're listening to each other on the phone, so it sounds pretty pretty trashy, so you guys should be happy about that. Is there anything you specifically wanted to talk about? I had this so much stuff going on right now. Um there's you saw the they they awarded the um, Nobel Peace Prize to the to the we the Uyghur guy, right? No, I didn't see that at all. No, actually, it's it was, his name is uh, Ilham. <clears throat> I don't want to mispronounce his name. Ilhan Omar. <laughs> um, it was it was like just I think it was just today. It was Justin the Trudeau. it was okay. Sorry, it wasn't the Nobel Peace Prize. It was the the Sukharov. Su 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 Prize for Freedom of Thought by the European Parliament, <clears throat> and they they his name is Il Ilham Tohiti, I think is his name. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but he's a Uyghur. He's currently a in... Uyghur. What's a Uyghur? Oh, sorry, a Uyghur. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he's You're tired, Uyghur. man. Yeah, I'm really tired, and I'm also like kind of trying to not be sick. So sorry for everyone for my my brain not functioning correctly right now. I'm really really <laughs> tired. Um. But he's currently in Xinjiang in a concentration camp, in Chinese concentration camp. And so he was awarded in absentia. Yeah, basically. He's an, he's an economist, but he runs a website. I just did like a little bit of research on him today because I, I just heard about today. And I figure if we're going to plot, I should probably have some idea of what I'm talking about. But he's, he, he runs a, a, a website, which I believe is called like Uyghur Today or something. Uh, Uyghur Online is what it's called, and he basically just 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 discusses Uyghur issues and also issues about like Uyghur Han Chinese things. And yeah, he's he's currently in a concentration camp because that's what China's doing right now. And but interesting, good good to see that he's getting some recognition. I'm sure that Xi Dada and all his fucking CCP cronies are very pissed about that. As they hopefully, I hope I hope they're just angry and sad and. Winnie the Pooh is just crying himself in his little honey honey pot. He's probably, I mean, he's just irritated. I find it very ironic that, like, for for a country that um, seems to care very little in their actions, they seem to care a lot about what other countries think of them in terms of their discourse. Yeah. And and and, and but they do nothing to uh, to uh, uh, affect that. Like, there's just no. No willingness to work to like prevent those things because it's. I mean, when you're such a large nation that's so authoritarian, it has to maintain that like its own appearance, both because they're they're creating this internal mask basically that's like that shows that like you know the party is strong and the party cuts down on crime and any any sort of dissidence it just totally wipes them out because that that's we it will weaken the party, but obviously that looks bad to anyone who says like you know on the outside that accepts freedom and democracy that's like oh you can't take even like the lightest criticisms like you put people in fucking concentration camps because they have a different religion than you and they don't want to drink alcohol and you force them to do that and eat pork and all this bullshit yeah that's a little i mean that's some of that stuff is just kind of sadistic to be honest but i think i think the crux of it is that we look at this from a western perspective whereas like th this is kind of they're all rational actors they're trying to they're trying to get what they want politically, but they're also trying not to be criticized too much on the international stage so that they can maintain mm -hmm. their prestige. But I think the, the way that they actually think is vastly different from us. I think that the way that they think is almost like, well, especially the ones in power, that they're basically completely brainwashed with the superiority of the, the, the communist way of thinking, even though, I mean, it's based on, it's based on farce. I mean, that's, that's our yeah. opinion, but, but for them, yeah. the, there's no other way, and that ideological like heterodoxy is a serious crime because you need to maintain this order, you need to maintain this system, and that it's not it's not a 
it's not so much a crime to be criticizing them it's a crime to think that there's any other that there's legitimacy to any criticisms you mm-hmm. know what i mean yeah I, I get what you're saying almost like like an aurelian thought crime yeah you know i the crime isn't doing the crime is thinking thinking that we're wrong i was thinking about this because i i know maybe two pods ago and obviously just in our discussions off pod you you said you recently re re-re- reread uh, 1984 and I think yeah. I think that, um, and I've I've heard people s- arguing about whether 1984 or A Brave New World is more accurate in its depiction of the current society. And I think that China is much more Brave New World style. And I think that, or sorry, the opposite. I believe 1984 is much more aligned with what's going on in China. And I think A Brave New World is kind of more accurately a depiction of what's going on in places like the West. Um, not totally, they, they not, and not to, to not to the same China. degree. Oh, for sure, for sure. But I think because the I think thing. Go ahead. Brave New World. I I think that it's almost a combination of the two. In 1984, people are people are basically kept in in a state of of misery just because it's it's a way of keeping power, and and the state needs to maintain this rigid ideological authoritarianism i think as far as the authoritarian aspect 1984 describes that well but as far as brave new world i think that it describes not the authoritarianism but the kind of keeping the the cow keeping the pigs well fed that people won't complain too much and as long as you keep standards of living high and you keep giving luxury goods and a kind of comfortable lifestyle to more and more people that people won't actually question the system in place yeah, so the it's thing, kind of a combination. True, for sure, and of course, there's overlap and things like that. They're both dystopian novels, but what I feel I, like, what I think, nineteen eighty. Let ahead. me just say before I forget. Sorry, sorry. Go I ahead. think 1984 is how they deal with dissidents, and Brave New World is how they deal with everyone else. Okay. Okay, that's fair. What uh, the reason I compare it to a Brave New World is because, or I, the reason I compare the West to the Brave New World is just because in that book there seems to be just an overwhelming deluge of just like random information and it's hard to pin pin down what's true and what's false at sometimes and i feel like that's what's true for most especially in america like looking at people's takes on the election and stuff there's just such a a, sl- a sludge of all this information and most of it's not fact checked well and even when there are quote unquote fact checks you look at like these washington post fact checks on like bernie sanders and he'll use facts that they literally gave about health care like how many people go bankrupt or how many people die because they don't have health care in america he'll use exact numbers that their own reporters have used and they'll say like oh because he used this like one word in a sentence like we give him three out of four pinocchios and it's just like how is that a fact check this is complete trash like how is anyone supposed to suss out the like the like a normal person who wor- four Pinocchios. Yeah. That's what they, they go. Fucking twats. They're so stupid, man. That's why you really got to be – that's why I'm so critical of the mainstream media is because they have such – I mean, you know, I'm not – I mean, obviously, there's, there is I'm problems. I'm going to give the Washington Post three out of four Mussolinis. <laughs> I give them four out of four Mohammed bin Salmans. And it's just <laughs> – bullshit man and that's why people have to you have to have a lot of sources and you have to like fact check them because that is the problem that i've noticed is there's just so much stuff coming out about it it's just like so hard for people to figure it out well i mean and people still think that people like uh what's his name fucking andrew yang is like try it's like in favor of medicare for all and he just came out recently in a video and was basically like no i'm not like i'm not in favor of medicare for all and Pete Buttigieg, like, people Andrew, think yeah. he's in favor of Medicare for all, even though he's not. Stupid man. Go ahead. What, what was your take on that statement today? Because I saw that uh, the social media was active with that. Say that again. What was your take on Andrew Yang's statement today regarding uh, U.S. relations with China and Taiwan? Oh, I didn't actually. The Devil's I, Triangle. <laughs> I haven't. I didn't see that. I didn't actually see that video. I saw that it was a video, but I didn't have time to watch it. I saw it at, when I was at work. Oh, I didn't see the video, but you know basically what he said, right? What did, did you he read say? the quote? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Okay, so the quote, so lots of Taiwan watchers were, like, really excited. He's like, um, he 
I, I don't remember the verbatim words, but essentially he said that the U.S. agreement, the U.S. Taiwan defense agreement, should be the starting point of any relationship between the United States and China, and and their um, their resolve to to maintain the status quo, maybe. Mm -hmm. Basically, so so lots of Taiwan watchers saw that and they're like, oh yeah, like he's standing up for Taiwan, but. If you actually look on the face of it, talking about the status quo and, and putting this issue on hold any longer is just kind of like a bad move. That I think that instead the United States needs to move closer to Taiwan, that basically they need to recognize their independence and be willing to, to stand up for that. Because in 20, 30 years, listen, China's willing to stall this a little longer if they think they can win. For sure. And the longer, the longer they stall, the more likely they are to actually win in a conflict with the United States. So the, the United States and Taiwan would behoove themselves to act early, to act decisively, and to fucking to end this issue once and for all instead of endlessly putting this status quo shit out there and like saying, we're just mm -hmm. going to leave it. Because you know what? In 30 years, there's nothing to say that the United States will or could defend Taiwan. And that's going to be a big problem. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, not to mention that like the status quo has already been violated multiple times by China. They don't respect any there is no status, status quo. quo. Yeah, there's no status the quo. The status quo is that there is no state of war, basically. Yeah, there's there's a de facto peace, but there's no, yeah, there's no, there is no status quo or any agreement. Neither side agrees to any of that agreement. Taiwan acts as an independent country, and China doesn't doesn't uh, agree with that or observe that, and they try to do everything they can to undermine it, mostly using their money and their power to sway places like the UN or buy up states allegiance allegiances from Taiwan um, and you know use that in these belt and road initiative type things where they basically again buy allegiance and f strong arm these people into voting with them it's not there's yeah there's no sort there's no status quo i think is a good point so i agree also keeping with the china issue did you see that china promised to buy 20 million dollars worth of farm goods if the U if the U.S. like basically acquiesced to like some sort of like minor trade agreement, like if it, if the it was basically I forgot the exact statement, but it was something like if the you know if the U.S. like starts trade negotiations and signs like a minor trade agreement to start like we'll buy twenty million dollars or twenty billion sorry twenty billion dollars worth of U.S. Ag agricultural products. I love how is, the U.S. tries to get to get Donald Trump because Donald Trump is is a very I'm not going to use like insulting language, but he he usually thinks in the very short term. Everything mm -hmm. for him is extremely short term, and yeah. this is how China loves to to run their stuff. Like when they try and, and negotiate, they don't like a, ever negotiating permanently. It's always like one off things. Mm -hmm. So they're going to purchase twenty billion dollars worth of of American goods and then continue abusing the United States in every other facet. So it's just going to be a one off purchase of probably mostly of pork which they're desperate for yeah this absolutely is, this and, is a win-win for china and it's a lose for the united states but this is like perfect for donald trump to be like see i, I won and, yeah. and take this home to like you know rural southeastern voters who are like yeah we beat china and then and they continue mm -hmm. to get abused by them in every way shape and form well and all, another point which everyone should know is that the average of Roughly a rough average of how much China buys from us every year anyway, $20 billion. They actually bought 20, I think it's like t almost $26 billion in 2012, which is like the record. But they basically pay that anyway every year. So bleed them dry. Fuck you. That's what I would say to China. You, know, you want to pay the same amount that you've been paying for years and years while we have a trade deficit with you? And why? You, not only that, why you put? Why you threaten our, our allies and you take over sovereign places and annex places like tibet and put fucking you know muslims in to and millions of muslims in concentration camps get the fuck out of here because who's negotiating jordan it's not america that's negotiating it's donald trump and he's gonna take this home as a win to like you know nebraska south carolina voters and to be, be fair, like yeah we as of this moment he hasn't agreed to it which i hope he doesn't it's not only him though, and he, I think he would. The thing is, yeah, th it, this agreement has to be ratified by Congress, and judging based on like the the, the critical China voices in the Senate, it's probably not going to pass. Marco Rubio basically already came out and said like this is not a this is a no go. You're basically getting nothing. Not I wish Marco Rubio in. would would only talk about that because I follow him on Twitter because I feel like I have to, and when he talks about Taiwan, I'm like. 
Nice, Marco. Good, good, good stuff. Literally every other tweet, ninety percent of his tweets are just Bible verses, and the rest of them are just like the most cringy fucking trying trying to slam dunk on Democrats and like fucking whiffing on the backboard. It's just like, oh man, like get it together, Marco. Fucking sad little Marco can't fucking tweet for his life. So angry at Marco. I Listen, don't. I, think, I don't like him, but I do, I give him credit for d- doing a good job on China and supporting Taiwan. I will give him that, and so I'm not. Jordan, the Republican Party is about to split. Like, so he's a member of a Republican Party that's not going to exist in ten years. Yeah. This is not the party of Donald Trump. I mean. Yeah, it's he, going to be. He's deluded. Be he's deluded if he thinks that that they have a future together. That's yeah. all I have to say. Yeah, that's fair. Because they don't. That's a good point. Totally agree. There will there will definitely be a rift. There's already a rift that is formed basically between. I mean, even though the I, in a lot of ways, like the ideologies are not that different, but I feel like they don't. They're f- going further and further away from actually. They're completely having different. A consi- Donald a consistent Trump is ideology. They are uh, almost as different as as you could get from the Republican Party. They're anti trade, whereas pro- Republicans are pro business, pro trade. They're anti-interventionism, whereas Republicans are very pro-international interventionism. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're they're pro-business and pro-low taxes, whereas like Donald Trump's like uh, rural voters are are probably heavily in favor of federal spending and increased government intrusion into into like state programs in terms of dealing with the, the opiate problem, in terms of dealing with unemployment issues. They couldn't be further apart. The only thing that that basically combines them right now is maybe Christianity. I think you're giving like, a lot of people too much credit, and this is not to like shit on people. I just think a lot of people don't pay attention to politics. I think if you asked people where they where do you stand on a lot of these things, like if you ask people like in the Republican Party, do you like big government or small government? They probably say small government, and you say, okay, well that means you lose all your farm subsidies. We don't we don't go to war with you know these. You know, is like is quote unquote like Islamic extremists or whatever. And it's just like, I think a lot of them just kind of don't really know what they re- actually believe in. They just oh my my grandpappy voted, and it can probably the same can be said for a lot of Democrats as well. They don't really understand what kind of all ideology they hold because they don't have much of one. They just know I want to help people or I want less. I want my taxes cut. You know taxation is yeah. theft or whatever you know I, I just don't think a lot of people actually think about this so I think that's a fair argument but for the ones that do i think that mm-hmm. for the ones who the, the elites the ones that are in power and the ones who form the ideology they're the ones who are going to have to split eventually because this coalition can't last in this state yes. for those yes for the people in power definitely i think they obviously they do think about it but i think it will see i think when the Republicans start getting in new younger Republicans, though it doesn't seem like there are a ton of them. When they start getting those, then the idea uh, ideology might start to shift, as we're seeing some of the shift in the Democratic Party with a kind of changing of the guard. Or, I mean, you know, there are still people like Sanders, Sanders and stuff who are much more progressive and things like that. And I've been trying to push the party left for a lot, but uh, a long time. But you're also having a lot of new people come in uh, that are also trying to push the party left. Um, you know and whether they're doing that in the best way possible, we can have you know discussions about that. But it seems like it will, yeah, it will probably shift with the new people because there are so many old Republicans that are just sycophants. Like I mean, we talked about last time, you know, the Ted Cruz just probably disagrees with Trump on almost everything. But then when you know when tr- Trump is pretty clearly going to get the nomination, he's out there phone banging for them after the guy s- sent out a tweet with his. F- his, like a, the ugliest picture of his wife that's ever been taken, and and, and like and you know what I think another point is that they use these comparisons. They're like these guys voted with Trump like ninety percent of the time. Trump doesn't ever fucking vote. Trump has got like a handful of bills through Congress, and they basically only pass bills and and put them up for a vote when when they already know it's going to pass and it's going to be signed by the president. So like saying you vote with Trump all the time is not a good measure of whether they ideologically agree with Trump. Because yeah. I agree with you. Trump doesn't have an ideology particularly either. He No, absolutely not. He's mostly manipulated by the people around him. He has some really core ideas that are based off mostly nonsense and fairy tales, but he's fairly easily manipulated, as you can see with the Turkey issue, you know? Well, it's, yeah, it's similar to, to... Yeah, that's a good... That's a very good example. But, I mean, similar to, to 
George W. Bush. I mean, he was very heavily influenced by the people that he had around him. Basically, just followed them around like a lost puppy. So, yeah, I don't. I, I've I just, heard I've heard a lot of stuff that George W. Bush had more influence than we assume, but I'm not sure. It's hard to, to get an inside picture. But with all the testimony that's coming out over this this stuff with Trump, I mean, it's clear how many people were whispering in his ear and like basically everybody who he, he respects and listens to. They basically got their way on this, okay, and maybe, most of them mm-hmm. didn't do not have American intentions in mind. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what can you expect when you, you know, you're talking with millionaires and billionaires who are heads of, you know, a lot. That's of not what I mean, of, though. I mean, what do you? So what do you mean? It seems by like it? he for, for him because now he's a head of state. It seems like the only people he respects is other heads of state. Okay. So the people that talk to him and try to twist his issue on Ukraine. Or, or who basically formed his opinion of Ukraine were not his advisors, who now he seems is below him, but were uh, Viktor Orban of Hungary, a lovely mm-hmm. character. Yeah, lovely. Vladimir Putin of Russia, who who had a conversation with him and told him basically that Ukraine is a corrupt shithole, as did as did Orban, and Giuliani, who it's fairly clear at this point is going to be convicted within the next few months of being a foreign agent, an unregistered mm-hmm. foreign agent. Yeah. Because. I mean, I don't know if there's money that changed hands, but he's got so much, so many business interests in these countries, like, and he, he's basically just whispering in Trump's ear, like, all these idiotic notions that are not good for America. Like, like let's get out of the way so that, um, and for that matter, Erdogan, Erdogan, uh, from what I heard, basically, I mean, the way this was presented in the media is not the way that, like, it, it seems like it actually went down. It seemed in the media, basically that Donald Trump announced that he was moving out and the Turks are like, hell yeah, we'll go in, right? Mm-hmm. That's what it sounds like in the media. That's mm-hmm. not at all what happened. That's not mm-hmm. at all what happened. The, the, basically, Erdogan called Trump and said, we're going we're gonna to move in. You better watch the fuck out. And Trump's like, oh, no. You know I, you mm-hmm. know what? I don't want to make you angry. I'm going to pull my troops out so that you can do whatever you want. That's what happened. Like, yeah. Turkey made the first step here and Trump completely acquiesced to everything they wanted thanks yeah, like to a, a phone call from Erdogan like a fucking lawn chair just folding up well you know and and not only that but Carter Page basically went on record basically saying that that this would happen like every three months like during the Obama administration that Erdogan would call and say we're gonna invade you better get the fuck out of the way and like when you have like real experienced statecraft people there mm-hmm. they're basically like you better not or you're gonna blow up the NATO alliance and get nuked and yeah. Erdogan, being the the fucking Piper Tiger strongman that he is, back the hell yeah. down because he knows he can't stand a chance. And Donald Trump is a sycophant yeah. and is not willing to ever use military force. So basically, he's like, "Oh no," and just pulled out. Well, and I'm pretty against using military force except for self defense. But I mean, if we're protecting our allies, aka the Kurds in this case. Then this I think yeah. Using military force, we were already there. If 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 he that's wants what I'm to saying. invade that's what I'm saying. territory that's held by our allies and start firing on American troops, you know, let NATO crumble. Like he's gonna fire on us. That's that's the end of the alliance and that's the end of modern Turkey as far as as far as the yeah. world is concerned. Hundred percent. And it, the thing is, is kind of what you were alluding to. It's just it's never gonna come to that. Like it didn't under the Obama. It wouldn't if someone stood up strong to them because no one is going to step up right now to the U.S. military. It it would be a joke. They would get wiped off the map if we actually went to war. And I hope that doesn't happen. I hope all. I'm obviously against all wars, but you know, the, it's not just, all wars. Probably eh, some some wars. Okay, to save yeah. You, okay, yeah. To yeah. Genocide. I mean. I want all – okay, what I want to say is I want all wars to end because we don't need war anymore is what I'm saying. Like I don't think that any war is good, but some wars are just, I guess is what I, I, guess okay. I should say. I, 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 I should explain that. That po- explain that point more. Um, but – and the thing is is I've seen some of these – some like lefties being like – that kind of like are you know, Twitter personalities or whatever going out there and saying, oh, it's good that Trump pulled the troops out because we're pulling out of these – illegal wars which you know he pulled out like 300 troops from a place that wasn't in a state of war like exactly northeastern syria had no active conflict exactly and he didn't pull those troops out of the middle east it's not like those troops came home they went to saudi arabia to protect saudi oil fields like they're they're not coming home 
These people aren't coming home. They're just moving them to a different place in the Middle East to protect fucking Mohammed bin Salman, the guy who killed a fucking journalist, who had Khashoggi chopped up in a in a fucking Saudi embassy. It's stupid, man. man it's they're chumps. They're chumps is what it is. Absolutely, absolutely, and it, it's it's enraging, and that's you know that's why we gotta we gotta get we gotta get Trump out of there. We gotta get someone in there with a who's actually gonna care about this stuff and like take take these things seriously and like be actually be strong but not be a fucking strong man you know what i'm saying but um uh oh i had a couple quizzes that i was gonna have you do if you wanted to do them sure one of them is uh 11 30 very hungry because, quiz time because <laughs> uh because i hate uh very tired. because one of my least favorite uh, Democratic primary candidates is Joe Biden. Uh, so I was gonna, there's one that's who said it, Trump or Biden, and the other one was there's a Bernie Sanders poll that is like, oh man, I think they might have taken it down. Never mind, the Bernie Sanders poll. I have to find another time, but it's like who said it, Joe Biden, Trump, uh, oil lobbyist, or like something else. And there, it was pretty funny. I watched some of those. Do you want to take this poll, or you want to talk about something else? Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. I, I assume right. that it's kind of like meant to trick me, though, so uh, I expect to yeah, not do great. I, I would say I did, I did like one or two, and I got them, I got, I got them right. So you, I think you'll be fine. But um, even if you're wrong, yeah, that's the point. It's so this is just to give credit. This is in Bloomberg, and it was written by Ryan Teague Beckwith. So there you go. If anyone wants to check it out, just go to Bloomberg and look for this. It's just it just says who said it colon Trump or Biden question mark. Um, okay, so the first the first quote. So you just have to attribute the quote. The first quote is I stopped in Singapore to meet with a guy named Lee Kuan Yew, who most wait who uh, who are the two people I can choose from? Joe Biden or Donald Trump? Okay. Uh, so he says I stopped in Singapore to meet with a guy named uh, Lee Kuan Yew. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, who most foreign policy experts around the world say is the wisest man in the Orient? So is that, is that a uh, Biden or Donald Trump? Using the word Orient seems like a seems like a Biden gaff to me, but yeah, that's a tough one. I would have to say Biden, just just like a gut, but there's no reason for that. That's also what I said, and you are correct. Um, he it says here's a little fun fact for you. It says Biden used outdated term the outdated term from Asia when recurring to the foreign prime minister of Singapore during a get out the vote rally in Iowa in 2014. Just hours earlier, he had apologized for using the term Shylocks to describe unpo- unscrupulous lenders in previous speech. So it's quality, quality a verbiage. <laughs> All right, That's here's bad. the next one. This one this one is good for you as a Arizonian. Yep. Yeah, Shylock is pretty bad. Um, from Phoenix to Flagstaff, from Mesa to Yuma, the Red Rocks of Sedona, this great state was settled by some of the toughest men and toughest and most beautiful women to ever walk the face of the Oh, I, okay. Well, the, the grammar <laughs> inconsistency, that's obviously Trump. All right, let's see. You are right. And it says, Trump made the remarks during a visit to Arizona in 2018. So, uh, by the way, also, do you know where Shylock is from? Where that word comes from? I just know it's... It's it was it's like a, a term for like Jewish moneylenders, right? I actually don't know the origins of the term. Is the character? That it's like a in Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember hearing that before. The tragic uh, hero. Yeah, and so uh, Shakespeare, the first anti-Semite. Just kidding. They were <laughs> Semites a lot longer, <laughs> a long time before that. Um, the next one. I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do. I suspect I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like. It, uh, I remember sorry, this. If if you'd like, Frank. I remember this. This was a Trump quote. Who who Frank was it? I'm trying to think. Hang on, hang on. Are you I sure remember about this. that? This is... One more time. I think if you're saying I'm not sure about that. He he asked. He said. I forget what he said, but he there were. I remember there was a specific quote for him where he was basically saying, "I'd love to have an IQ test against that guy, real idiot." But he now did you're saying say, he he did say that, but this quote is actually from Joe Biden. Okay. So he made this 
quote uh, when he was responding to his uh, a question about his academic record in New Hampshire during a 1987 presidential campaign. Uh, in his response, he also misstated his record, saying that he received a full academic scholarship to law school, although his campaign later said that it was a partial scholarship based on need. So, but yes, your, is a long time ago, man. Yeah, it's a long time ago. But this that's goes to your point is th- that's what this whole thing is about. Is they kind of sound the same, but yeah, you are right. There, he did ask someone to do he. Uh, Trump has said multiple times like he'd love to take an IQ test, even though he'll never take one because he knows he won't turn out well for him. All right, the next one is. By I'm the way, not go ahead. When Shakespeare wrote *A Merchant of Venice*, I mm. think the Jews were banned from England. That sounds so, believable. I don't think there were any Jews in the UK at the time. So he may have been an anti-Semite without having ever met or known a Jew if he was an anti-Semite. Yeah, I actually don't know if if he was an anti-Semite. So just to be fair to Shakespeare, don't cancel Shakespeare yet. Well, a lot of people speculate that half of his stuff was written by Christopher Marlowe. So. I've, yeah, I've heard there's a lot of speculation that like it's all of his shit was like a bunch of different writers, so who knows. Who knows? Maybe we do need know. to cancel Shakespeare. I like the stories. I haven't read all of his all of his stuff, but I what I've read, I, read all was, his stuff. I, I thought was in, I thought most of it was interesting. Little Hamlet, little Macbeth, good stuff. Little Romeo and Julieta, not bad. <laughs> uh, all right, the next one. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry for anything that I have ever done. I have never been disrespectful intentionally to a man or a woman that sounds like a trump quote i seem to remember that that is also joe biden so joe biden made this comment after a speech in washington in april in his first remarks after several women came forward to say that he had touched them inappropriately oh so Um, he was referring specifically to sexual assault but that's a pretty idiotic thing to say i've never been disrespectful to any man or woman ever in my life it's ridiculous it's ridiculous um yeah. But you can find gaps from everybody. Yeah, for sure, for in sure. In his defense. This is just a fun little quiz that we're doing just for, for shits and gigs. Uh, it's not the next fun to be is, wrong, Jordan. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I also probably would have gotten that wrong. All right, so I don't know the answers <laughs> to the rest. Just joking, I don't know. Man. I don't know the answers to the rest of these, so we can we can do this together. And I won't click it. I promise. I won't cheat. I won't click it until we both say our answer. So this is the next one. I punched my music teacher because I didn't think he knew anything about the music, and I almost got expelled. I'm not proud of that, but it's clear evidence that even uh, that even early on, I had a tendency to stand up and make my opinions known in a very forceful way. Oh, I really don't know that one. This one I, f- I don't know, but I f- this one I feel is a Biden quote. I feel it's a Trump. Really? I'm like 51:49 that it's Trump. This this strikes me as Joe Biden because he always talks about fighting. I feel like Trump doesn't really talk about fighting. He just always threatens to send his goons after people. That's true, but I I seem to remember him talking about fighting people in like junior high school, like that period. Yeah, because he was angry because his dad hated him. He's angry for a lot of reasons. He's angry about his little hands. <laughs> All right, let's let's check this. Let's see see who it is. It is Donald Trump. You are right. So Trump recounted this anecdote uh, about the time in second grade, second grade, when he <laughs> gave a teacher a black eye, and and yeah, he I don't said, believe that. He said, I don't believe that gave, a seven-year-old no, gave a, of course, a teacher no. a black eye. They're not no. tall enough to reach that high. Thank you yeah, very exactly. much. He would have punched him. He would have punched his teacher in the fucking like low, upper upper abdomen. But he's, he's, it was in the art of the deal, so obviously it's almost not true. And he said, completely um, fabricated. So in a 2016 interview with the Washington Post, he downplayed the incident, saying, when you're that young, nobody punches very hard. <laughs> anyway, anyway, all right, the next one is, oh. I cannot believe that a Frenchman visiting Kiev went back home and didn't say he discovered the most beautiful woman in the world. That's my observation. It's certain that you have so many beautiful women. This one is hard. Because of the recent stuff. Do you know stuff. the answer? No, I don't know the answer. I can look. You want me to look, or do you want to take a guess first? It, I mean, it, on the face of it, Donald Trump seems to talk a lot more about beautiful women, like in a in For a sure. creepy way, than Biden does. For sure, but, but on the, the other most, hand, the recent allegations about Biden and and uh, and his crack crackhead son in 
in Ukraine, you know. His son's a pretty handsome guy, by the way. I think that he could run. He's for handsome, but he also future. he also he also stole his dead brother's wife. Oh really? And is a crackhead. Um. Um. I think that I mean because because it seems so obvious that it would be Trump, it may be trying to throw it throw us off. That's kind of how I feel about it. I th- I'm going to say that I think it's Biden. What's your what's your what's your? I opinion? have a feeling it is too. I feel like this is a trick question because it's not it's not that bad or egregious. All right, let's see. It is Joe Biden. We are both right. So Biden and everyone at home should be playing along with us, please. Uh, so he said he made the re- remarks while speaking with Ukraine President uh, Viktor Yukashenko during a 2009 visit, and the the two were heard. Uh, in a pool, uh, by a pool reporter while drinking cokes. Uh-huh. I don't know why they need to say that. No advertisements. Um, I mean, it's kind of like a gross. It's like a really gross conversation, but like, it's not. It's not like you know Donald Trump bad. It's not. It's yeah. It's not. By that. It, it. It. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's not sexually. Grab by the porcupine. Women. Grab that porcupine, everybody. No, don't grab the porcupine. It'll prick you. Um. The, this is the next one. The press always asks me, don't I wish I were debating him? No, I wish we were in high school. Then I could take him behind the gym. That's what I wish. I remember this. This is a Joe Biden quote. This is Biden, yeah. Yeah, I also remember this. And it is Joe Biden. So he he made while, while he was campaigning for Hillary in 2016. So talking about the Access Hollywood tape. So that's that one. That, that one's pretty easy. Uh, the next one, I guess we'll have, we'll have to compare IQ tests, and I can tell you who is going to win. Well, this must be the Trump one. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking too, and it is the Trump one. That's the way he uh, talks too. Yeah, he. This is a Forbes magazine uh, article, and he, which he he called fake news, and that Rex Tillerson. Uh, it was when Rex Tillerson called him a moron, and actually he didn't just call him a moron; he called him a fucking moron. So, <laughs> good old, fun. good old piece of shit, Rex Tillerson talking <laughs> old, shit about another piece of shit. Good old Rex, just a big fucking pile on of assholes calling everybody assholes uh next one so nobody has more like sycophant sycophant losers man like they they go out of their way so far for this fucking guy and then he stabs them in the back because he's the most gutless like backstabbing trash bag there's ever been and i can't believe anybody still has his back because he will stab you in the back like the next day it's because they hope to get power, man. It's all a power. It's a power grab. It's how much power can I get? Real sick of pants, man. Real sad world we live in. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. All right, here's the next one. Nobody has more respect for women than I do. Nobody. Nobody has more respect. Donald Trump. I remember this. That is Donald Trump. I didn't make a guess, and I actually don't know which one I would have picked because I feel like that was one of the trick ones, but you are right. Uh, he made the remarks during his third debate against Clinton. He was responding. I remember to it. I'm, so I remember the bloody debate. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've watched so many debates. I've watched all the Democratic debates at least once. Most of them two to three times since then. So I've. It's all been ca- cast from my mind. But, I have to um, say I haven't really been watching them because they're all like pretty boring. They're pretty boring. There's some good lines in them, and I will say that the most. The problem is the most recent debate they had. If they had, had them in podcast form, I would. You can uh, – I'll tell you the trick here, and everyone else can follow this one, is the latest one is a – I believe it's CNN New York Times debate. You can go to the New York Times website. You can play it through a browser, and then you can turn off your phone screen, and you can listen to it as a podcast. Here's That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the audio, a non-copyrighted version, and I'm going to put it on the Free China Post server – and you can syndicate it as a podcast. Okay. It's acceptable to me. How does that sound? That sounds okay to me. It's. I think everyone should kind of at least listen to it, even if you're kind of like listen to it while you clean your house or while you, you know, drive to work or something. It's good to listen to it and just kind of get an idea of where these candidates stand and I totally get an agree. Idea I just can't how sit they're... and watch that for like three hours. I can oh, listen no, to I... it, but I can't watch it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I do is I, I put... Uh, I mean, the other ones I just turned on YouTube, watched them on YouTube. This one I it wasn't yeah, on I YouTube sit at there. first. I, I podcasts work better for me, so fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I just I just put my phone in my pocket, even if 
YouTube is open and just listen to it. I never watch them. The only time I the the first two two debates basically, I would tur- I would look at my phone screen periodically because I would be like, who is talking? Like, is this which one of the like boring like governors is talking? I can't I can't tell their which voices one of the boring point. governors. It's just like who who is this? Like uh, someone? It's obviously someone pulling at like one one percent. Is this Tim Ryan or like I don't know who is it? I don't really care that much because they they have Tim. no chance. Ridiculous, ridiculous. All right, here's the next one. What if I'm? By trying... the way, by the way, speaking okay, about podcasts, shout out to mm-hmm. HTC because after using this HTC phone for a few days, it's a really good phone, and this is a two year old phone, so that's saying a lot. Like. If HTC made a new phone that had a headphone jack right now, I would I would buy it hands down. And I've they been make... buying, I've only bought their phones for like almost exclusively for my whole life, and then I stopped because that headphone jack thing it literally ruins the whole thing. It's a deal. It's a deal breaker, man. It is. It is. I don't know what, but all the phones that they've released recently have a headphone jack. Like all the budget, they've released a lot of budget phones this year. They all have it, except the U nineteen E plus. If if their next if their next flagship phone has a headphone jack, I will return to HTC. If it does not, then I will continue to buy other brands. I, I think I heard that Samsung is also getting rid of the headphone jack, in which case the only one left will be LG. And LG is not my favorite company because I've had fairly bad experiences with like their QC. Their phones seem to fail. Not for so, like my fault, like for just stupid reasons manufactured errors defects so sony sony doesn't have headphone jacks either nope not on their flagship Jeez. the only one i might just have LG. to start buying i might just have to start buying budget phones that may be what it is and i hate that yeah i hate that too but they're getting better they're getting really good the, the issues for me right now that budget phones don't have is a waterproofing and b oled screens so that they're not so hard on your eyes even just the light waterproofing is acceptable to me, and if it's got no, a blue but, light I mean, you filter, saw mine. Mine had no waterproofing, and that was an eight thousand yeah. dollar phone. Eight thousand Taiwan dollar phone. Yeah, obviously not, not, not U.S. dollars, but yeah, it's I don't know. It's just kind of ridiculous. You can buy a case that waterproofs it, but honestly, I hate using cases in general on my phone. When I'm like yeah. close to buying a new phone, I'll just take the case off of it because I, the feel of a phone without a case in your hand is so much better. Than when you have a case on it, I agree. But the little thin, like clear cases, they're not like the end of the world. I, I they're agree not the you. end of the world. But that phone, I went like in in the the current phone I have now. Whenever I'm at home, like sitting on my bed, I'll take the case off, and I'm just like, this is so nice. I like this. But then when I'm outside, obviously it's like now they make every phone out of like glass. Everything is glass, so it's like if you just drop it once, like your phone shatters. It's on purpose. Which is, like, cool i get to pick glass particles out of my hand now even though they're like it's gorilla glass six it could take a ak-47 bullet and it's just like well it can't it can't take falling out of my pocket so i for some reason don't believe that <laughs> like it seems like gorilla glass doesn't make a big difference Any the future, be, i agree with you ahead. but maybe the other alternative is just to buy old like old fucking s series phones that are or you could buy LG, man. LG is the last one. I mean, LG still makes headphone jack phones. Premium yeah. phones. As long as I can get a good camera. Because, like, this phone has such a good... Because it has the three cameras. It's just so... It's a game changer, man. It's like, I don't want to carry my film camera everywhere. Like, I want to take pictures with this thing. I... By the, by the way, I'm still super jacked that I got so much film for free today. That was crazy. It's pretty lucky. Pretty lucky yeah. guy. For anyone that doesn't, obviously no one knows except for Abby listening to this, I, I went into a film shop today and I asked the guy for film and he didn't have any. And so he pulled up this old, like, bag of film and he's like, it's expired, but, like, you can have it. He's like, he just hands me, like, eight eight rolls of film for free. He's like, it's going to be weird. Like, it may turn out, like, blurry. And I was like, I don't care, man. This is an art project. I love this. Thank you so much. I was like, I'll come back to develop the film here so you get some money out of this. But I'm stoked. So much film. That's crazy. Which store is that? Uh, the one you used to develop by my house. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. 
Why did he never give me any? Because I think usually he buys film, but I asked him if he had any to sell, and he's like, no, I'm sold out. And I was like, when are you going to buy more film? He's like, I don't know. I was like, can you buy some more? Because, like, this is so convenient. It's, like, literally a minute walk from my house. Like, yeah, I used to go there all film. the time. That, the dude is always nice to me. His wife is, like, kind of weird sometimes. But I anyway. thought he was really cold, but anyways. Well, maybe you're cold, Ari, and you just put off a bad vibe. Maybe you got bad it's vibes, possible. bro. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't know. It it depends. Like sometimes, I think it depends on what kind of mood they're in too. Depends on. Yeah, I think a lot of people who develop film have like weird vibes. The dude in Long Tan like, is is my boy, man. It's a dying business. Yeah, but he's like a he's a special case because he's like an old man in a small town. Yeah, he's he's, like, that's that's for sure. He doesn't care about like the dying industry. He's like. He's just riding it out. He's just looking for people to talk to. Yeah, I don't know. I just love that dude. He's a sweet boy. He's a very sweet little little film salesman. But yeah, he's very old and kind of just... He just hangs out in the store. Like, every time I walk in there, he's just, like, staring at his computer or, like, just hanging out, like, playing on his phone or something. Are you and talking about like the one does... the one close to you? No, 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 in Long Ten. And he doesn't even, like, notice me. I'm surprised he can use the cell phone, to be 100% honest. Nah, he's she's chilling. I don't know how well he uses it. He might just be looking at like IG models or something. Who knows what he's doing? But I always just like kind of walk in there and I'll have to like I like take my backpack off and like set it down on a chart like kind of hard so he like hears me because he's just like never paying attention. There's been a couple times I've gone in there and been in there for like two minutes and I'm just like, <coughs> and he just like finally looks over at me. I'm like, hey, how you doing? He's like, oh, hey. He like. Like, sometimes he remembers me, and sometimes he doesn't. I'm like, I'm probably literally, like, one of two foreign faces you've ever seen in, like, in this shop. So, like, you should remember me. But I don't care if you remember me or not, because you're, like, such... He's always so nice. He, like, I, I bought that black and white film that Abby was trying to get, and he was just, like... He was, like, oh, I don't know. This has been in here so long. He's, like, I'll give it to you for, like whatever like 400 or something i think he gave it to me for a cheaper price than he was gonna give to abby <laughs> like, all right i'll give it to you for 400 or i forget what it was but i was like whoa you have black and white film like i've almost never gone to places and seen black and white film he's like yeah it's been here forever he's like no one buys film anymore and i was like i love it he's like why do you use film why don't you use digital and i'm like digital's stupid i can use my cell phone for that like why would i do that but anyway all right, let's keep going on this quiz. So the next next question for you, what I'm trying to do is go around from town to town, and I'm drawing as I'm drawing big, and I'm drawing as big of crowds, bigger than anybody. Have you seen Donald anybody Trump. draw bigger crowds than me in the state? Yeah, I would also say Trump. Let's see. Because he's a hyperbole, the, the biggest. You are wrong. We are is both. It Biden? Is Biden? Biden made remarks while campaigning in Iowa in August. Uh, blah blah. So Steve Ducey then responded that he'd seen bigger crowds in Des Moines Procter and Biden to say, I know you're going to go after me no matter what. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. But I noticed that you didn't ask me why I'm ahead in the polls still. Big boy. I'm a big boy. All right, He's next a big one. boy. <laughs> He's a big boy. Oh, this picture is great. I'll send you this picture later. It's just Biden with his mouth wide open and Trump with his mouth wide open and both of them showing their hands. Uh, so it says it's packed outside, as you'll be able to see. But it's they've never seen crowds like this over here. That's not really. I mean, that's say it one more time. It's meaningless. It's packed outside, as you'll be able to see. But it's they've never seen crowds like this over here. Probably a Trump, but I mean, it's meaningless. Honestly, it's hard to tell. It's just like a jumbled grammar statement it could be anybody i could have yeah, said something like ex that exactly it's it is donald trump so yeah anyway that one yeah that one is like basically almost not even a sentence uh next one you can go to a 7-eleven or a dunkin donuts unless you haven't have a slight indian accent okay sorry hold on let me read this one more time you cannot cannot go to a 7-eleven or a dunkin donuts unless you have a slight indian accent i'm not joking i know who this is i remember this quote so you say yours first, then I'll say mine. I have no fucking idea. That's... Do you want to guess? Donald Trump doesn't usually say I'm not joking. He says I'm serious. He doesn't say I'm not joking. So I'm going to say it's Biden. You are right. Yeah, it's Biden. He. I remember what. There's a clip of this. You can go look it up on YouTube. 
He's like, he, he like says that. And he's like, he's like, I'm not joking. Like, I'm not joking. Like, that's true. It's just like ridiculous. He said it in 2006. And, I don't really uh, know what that means, if I'm being honest. He's uh, because a lot of a lot of convenience stores are owned by Indian Americans or, in, so or Indian immigrants. I don't know. It was weird. Like that's the thing. It was just a weird. He was like trying to make a joke. Like you can see in the video, he's like trying to joke, but it's just like, why? Why would you say that? Like that's yeah, weird. Weird, man. It's like cringy and kind of like awkward. Like, why? Yeah, it's just not a great thing. Anyway, I got something to next- tell you after the pod. Okay, I'll try to remember. Or you remember. One of us should nah. remember. One of us tries to remember. One of us remember. All right, next one. When these people walk into the room, they don't say, Oh, hello. How's the weather? It's so beautiful outside. How are the Yankees doing? They're doing wonderful. That's great. They say, We want we want deal. Not we want a deal. They say, We want deal. I think it's Biden because I don't think Trump could carry on a thought for that long. That's fair. And I, it... With the deal remark, it feels like they're trying to make you think Trump, but I think yeah, I think it's also Biden. So let's see. It was Donald Trump. Really? So it, he made the remarks when he was campaigning in Iowa in 2015. He also used broken English to imitate the accents of leaders in South Korea and Japan. Interesting. Uh, I promise you, there's only like two more. Okay, so I promise you, you're going to see the single most important thing that changes America. We're going to cure cancer. Donald Trump, I remember that. Oh, no, wait. Really? Yeah. Eh? I'm not sure. I don't know the answer yet, but I think it's Joe Biden because his son died of cancer. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes, You're right. It is, it is Biden. That's what makes me... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he did say Biden. he was, was going to cure cancer. Yeah, he made the remarks to the campaign event in Iowa. His oldest son, Bo, died from brain cancer in 2015. R.I.P. Bo. Um, One thing I, I have to say... I don't really know much about, like, Biden's background because I haven't taken the five minutes it would have taken to research this. But the vibe he gives off, at least, is that unlike Donald Trump, at least he's he's of a working class background so that he understands working class issues. Mm. Unlike a lot of Democrats, I have to say. Maybe, but what I would... Be... The thing is, he hasn't showed that because, I mean, his state is, like, basically a harbor for credit card debt. And he's, like worked his whole career to basically fight against people being able to default on credit card debt or like you know students to be able to get rid of these credit card this credit card debt or like student loans and things like that he's his i don't know delaware is like not a great place for people to like offload debt or like get out of debt and i just i don't think he like i mean there's the quote and i'll put it in here that he always that he said when he was young he's like i tried to prostitute myself to these big corporations and they wouldn't have me. I was ready to prostitute myself in the, man- the manner in which I talk about it. But now he, that was when he first started and now he is old enough and I think he is prostituting himself to these companies. And now I think he just thinks that he deserves it because he's been in it so long and he was Barack Obama's VP and so I'm just the next one in line and so I deserve it. And it's just this entitled bullshit that Hillary also has. And Hillary, speaking of, not to get off on too big of a tangent, has talked about maybe I'll run again. And it's just like, am I living in the fucking Twilight Zone? Like, you're literally the worst candidate in recent history. Like, you lost a, the guy who, like, can barely talk his way out of a fucking paper bag. Like, it's absurd. So, I don't know. I don't have, I mean, yeah, I would vote for Biden, I guess. Over, I, would vote for, I would vote for Biden over Trump. But I don't think he has very many, maybe he did in the early days, but I don't think that he has a lot of, working class bona fides, you know? I, I just don't, I don't have any love for Biden at all. I think he's a terrible candidate. I think he's also potentially like losing his mental faculties almost as quickly as Trump is. Okay, you give me a pretty, a lot to think about there. I... You can, you can, we, and both of us should probably go in and do more research and we'll, we can talk about this on the next one. Um, but yeah, we can talk about that more on the next one. But that's, that's, that's the feeling that I get from it. And I, from all the debates, I haven't. Ha- I mean, in the last debate, he was like yelling at Warren, like, "I got you votes. I got you votes for the." I think it was for the CPB. For and got you votes. I got votes for that bill. I convinced people to vote for it. So let's get those things straight too. I mean, I have qualms with Warren and stuff, but it's just like, oh man, like you're, you're losing it, man. Just keep it together. Like, 
talk about it. And also listening to the debates, I just feel like he's losing his shit. But anyway, I won't I won't drone on about that too long. Um, so let's do this last one, and then we can talk about what other whatever other things. I feel like there's a few th- few more things, and we should probably also wrap up soon. All right, here's the last one. We will come to the uh, we will come with the cures to many many problems to many many diseases, including cancer. Well, we already heard one from Biden, so this one's probably Trump. Right, it's got to be Trump, Trump, right? Let's see. Yeah, it is Trump. So, all right, we're done with that. That, that was not the greatest quiz ever, but. It started you, strong and it ended weird. <laughs> yeah, if you wanna if you wanna go and quiz your friends, you can have some fun with that and talk about how Trump and Biden are not that not as different as they probably should be. Being from I mean, they're they're probably pretty. Parties. I don't know, man. There's so many dimensions that you could talk about in, in terms of differences. They 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 are different. They're oh for sure. No, they are, they are definitely different. I don't want to say that they are the same because they're not. But they're more similar than a lot of avid Trump supporters or avid Biden supporters would say. I think they're much closer than they would say, but they're a lot more far apart than a lot of, like, I don't know, maybe far left-wing or maybe even far right-wing people would say. So, yeah, you, there's a, you're, you're absolutely right. There are a lot of dimensions to that, and those, those can be parsed out later. Um, we can talk about that in a later episode, but, yeah, I don't know. I just I gotta say Biden is one of one of I don't I don't even know if I want to talk about it but Biden is one of my least favorite candidates and I feel like the the least exciting candidate and one of the most likely to lose to Donald Trump in the election um, of the candidates that are polling above like ten percent which is like four of them but speaking of polls I just I saw a poll this week that I think it was an Emerson poll that Bernie is pulling from like it's like 18 to 25 or 30 he pulls like 45 percent of that group no one else pulls like over much over 10 percent for that from the democratic base which i thought was pretty interesting the youth love them the old people huh it's the old guard that that's a little skeptical yeah for sure and i think that I mean, and I I go on both sides of this because I will be the first to tell you that I don't think polling is totally accurate, accurate, especially when it comes to Bernie Sanders. I mean, you can look at the last election for that. You had people like uh, Nate Silver coming out and saying that there's like a 10% chance of, of Trump winning the election, and then he won it. Um, and basically saying, like, you all need to calm down. Like, there's no way Trump can win this thing, and like, blah, blah, blah. And Nate Silver is an idiot. I think he's like a decent at doing polls because like you know polling is there's margins of error and things like that and it's all about what kind of data you can get and like that's harder and harder in the time that we live in to get both older voters and younger voters depending on what what medium you go through that uh for but uh yeah man i hesitate to be like polls are bullshit but when it comes to bernie sanders there's they usually pull likely voters and a lot of people that are going to vote for Bernie Sanders are not "quote unquote" likely voters. He just had a rally with twenty six thousand people in New York. Twenty six billion people 20, showed up. Twenty six th- 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 b- 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 tr- tr- trillion people. <laughs> no, but like it's the it's the fucking biggest rally that like the U.S. has seen. Like it shattered all records. Like war. Twenty six like, thousand is the biggest rally. As far as I know, because like. The previous ones were like I think it was Warren with like slightly over twenty thousand, and that was like people were like freaking out about it. They were like, "Whoa, this is crazy!" And basically, not a peep, not a peep from the mainstream media about this huge rally that Bernie Sanders has. And the only things that I've seen is like these mainstream media pundits going, "Well, you know, his crowd looked pretty white," but (laughs) also they've also said the opposite because. I think it was CNN, but it might have been MSNBC. I forgot who it was. It's really not important because mainstream media is like a big conglomerate and I – whatever. We won't get into that. They said – is the, the – one of the articles on their website was, is the Bernie Sanders campaign too urban? And it's like <laughs> that's almost like – like. Try, like, are you are you trying to say that it's too black? Or are you trying to I say see that your it's too big there, city? I think that I, I don't it may know. have been too big city, and that I, he can't see, get rural voters, like he, he, Iowa voters. 
So what I will say, here's that's a perfect transition. I also thought that, because I saw people breaking, they were like, you fucking racist, like you're saying his campaign is too black. And I can see that interpretation too, and that's kind of the initial um, inkling that I got. But then I said, maybe they're actually being, you know, they're they're literally just trying to say that it's too big city. I have some data but on there, that, actually. But there was oh. a recent poll that just came out, I'll say this and then you, you go, that that they did – there was an article that said Trump beats Warren and Biden in Iowa. And in the third paragraph of this – I forget. It was like New York Times, I think, or maybe Washington Post. In the third paragraph of this article, they said, oh, actually, Bernie Sanders beats Trump 51 to 49 in Iowa. So that wasn't the fucking title that you led with. Tr- oh, Bernie is the only Democratic candidate that can beat Trump in Iowa. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, that's that's like, pretty bad, man. It's that's bad. bad. That's really bad. That's fucking journalistic malpractice. But go with what you're gonna say. There's data you can get from Google where they actually, I mean, it's not like explicit political data, but basically you can look by county to see which county, every single county in the United States, which uh-huh. Democratic candidate they search for the most, and Bernie mm. tends to dominate. I mean, it's actually pretty much what you'd expect. Kamala Harris dominates Southern California. Uh, Buttigieg is actually in a lot of like suburbs. Bernie Sanders is in urban areas across the country, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's his name? Beto is in South Texas, southeastern Texas, obviously. But yeah, you know I mean, it's it's pretty much mm-hmm. corroborated that that he does have a lot of support from big cities. But that's where a lot of people are. So for sure. And what I would also say is that he also got. There was times in the 2016 election when he was going to these southern cities, these rural cities, and he was getting people to stand up and cheer for Medicare for all. These, you know, white working and there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff about this working, you know, working class is only white people, and it's that's not it's accurate. Bullshit. It, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. Working class is everyone who works a fucking job. Like I'm inculcating a such worker. like a working class mentality into my students. Like every yeah. time we talk about. Um, there's like a whole chapter in the book about asking for raises. I'm like, I'm like, so class, why should we demand that every year we get raises because of inflation? And I'm like, if you don't get a raise every year, that means you're effectively getting a pay cut because your boss is stealing yeah. from you. Hell yeah. I love that <laughs> shit. Just it like, is, yeah. man. Look at the productivity. I don't, I don't know the exact numbers in Taiwan, but in America, the, you know, the, the productivity goes up every year and the wages stagnate man they've been stagnant for 30 40 fucking years and and it's it's especially bad for us man like i i mean i already talked to my boss at the beginning of the year she's like there's no way you'll get a raise for like two to three years probably Jeez, it's like and yeah i'm not gonna say anything else it's absurd it's it's bad i mean to be fair we get paid pretty well but this is all and you get yearly raises, and you do get yearly pay cuts, but I think that's pretty much like the only one in the country. And and you hit a certain point where you're – now, I mean, a lot of those people that have been there for a long time are just working for more paid vacation, which is basically – I mean, not even close to like a pay raise. It's just like chump change. Yeah, for sure. And what I would also say is that we just – I mean, you just – people have to – they have to demand more. And what I was going to say is that – we do get paid more, but I've also had this conversation with people, both Taiwanese and foreigners, as I say, you know, the Taiwanese teachers need to get paid more. But also, people will be like, criticize me sometimes and be like, you get paid so much, like, come teacher. And it's like, yeah, but you realize that we don't have, like, a family unit here. Like, you live with your parents until you get married, basically, here. And, like, I moved, I paid for a plane ticket to come here, and I live on my own. Like, we're totally self-sufficient whereas like granted like a lot of Taiwanese people pay their parents like give their parents money whenever their parents ask them for it or monthly pay their parents money which is you know it's a whole complicated issue in of itself but like I don't know I, I feel like Man, people just like to complain interest. honestly and like for sure they don't... for sure and people should complain but people also have to mobilize like I tell I tell the, the Taiwanese teachers at my school all the time they'll be like complaining about the wages or like the amount of like work that they have to do that's unpaid i'm like if you want to fucking go outside and strike like i'll go out there with you like i'll fucking i'll fucking raise a sign with you i don't care that's fine with me 
It's not gonna. I mean, it's not gonna happen. But none. That's something. what all of them say. They're like, I well, I you know, either I can't afford it or nah, I don't. You know, I don't care enough or I don't want to do that. And like, I can get that. But like, if you really want to fucking affect change, you gotta shut this shit down. Man. Taiwan never never developed a strong working class mentality because the industrialization of Taiwan happened so rapidly that they developed kind of a. There was never this kind of class divide that, that occurs in other countries where there was, like, the United States or Europe, where there was a slow industrialization, where there was a large, like, working class who was paid very little. Like, mm-hmm. the industrialization happened so fast that people were... It was were a boom, yeah. Basically kept at full employment, yeah, and they, they were competitive for jobs. And then immediately, basically the next generation, they started moving to the service industry, and all their kids were able to go to university with these salaries. There wasn't the kind of structural pain that causes this like these working classes to form and that's why the fucking labor laws here suck they suck they're especially bad and i mean this has been brought up especially recently um with like the deaths of a lot of um foreign laborers southeast asian foreign workers but like you know rights for these southeast asian workers are shit man they're terrible like a lot of these people have their passports confiscated when they come here. They're treated like absolute trash. Like I mean, that's illegal, but yeah, it still happens. It's illegal, but it happens. That's the thing. It happens, and it, it should be it should be talked about more. And I, it's something that I would have. I don't have the. I, I should do more research on because I don't know enough about it. But I do know that they're they're paid shit and they're treated like garbage. So I have not to all say of it. them, of course. Like I mean, there are some that are probably treated well by their host families, but a lot of them are treated pretty poorly. I the news that you shared before about Hangoyu coming out in support of uh, basically turning back some of the labor laws that make it that make it easier for employers to ask for overtime. At first, I was disturbed basically that that the KMT the KMT obviously is typically a more pro business party within Taiwan mm-hmm. that they would try and take a more leftward stance on labor rights. I mean, there's obviously the issues with the the pensions and stuff that the the DPP cut, but um, I don't know. That's kind of separate. I feel like, um, I. But now that I think about it, I think that this is an opportunity for for, for the KMT to basically drive the T, the DPP even further to to the whatever the Western version of the left, if that's such a thing, mm. which I don't think it is, but at least to a more leftward standpoint on this specific issue yeah i mean you could maybe i don't know i guess you could say more internationally left or more yeah how about a more worker friendly stance on this particular issue that's probably the probably the best way to frame it the dpp should be should be the party of of if they're the party of freedom and of democracy then they should definitely be the party of of equality and rights for all people and that i mean at its very base should include workers and sure. a fair fair workplace for all workers. So that's the major that's the majority of people. So if you're in favor of you know, egalitarianism and things like that, that's definitely as opposed to elitism and yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think this is a, this is a good opportunity for the DPP to to clap back and, and lead on this issue instead of neglecting it because they really this is really important. This is like one of the biggest issues. All, all the because I talk politics with lots of people all the time and that's a really mm-hmm. big issue. Especially in Gaosho, salaries are not good here, and people are very upset. and And I think that the Thai government has done a lot because we've had yearly minimum wage increases every year. But I think I mm-hmm. still think that more more needs to and should be done because a lot of people work unpaid overtime, and I think that that's that's a huge thing for the people across yes. Taiwan. It's also it's also a big deal, and maybe I don't know what we we could talk about. You know what the pay what the pay gap maybe is between northern and southern Taiwan, but I would say that in in Taoyuan, most of them actually work in Xinju, uh, at, because there's a there's a huge tech sector in Xinju. But a lot of the like middle middle aged engineers that I know and or teach uh, that I talk to, they say they work. Yeah, they'll work a lot of unpaid overtime. They're like, yeah, I work. You know, I go to work. Uh, start work at you know eight or nine, and you know a lot of times I'm there until nine or ten because I have to finish stuff, and a lot of times I'm doing that off the clock because if you clock too many overtime hours, the the manager shows up in your ear and is like, "Hey, you're clocking too many overtime hours. Why are you not being efficient enough?" Yeah, why are you so slow? Yeah, and it's like, oh, actually, it's just impossible. 
it's, that's if you're asking for these are Sisyphean tasks that you're asking for, and it's there's deliberate. no way that I, I mean, can do it. Yeah, of course it's deliberate. They're trying to stretch a little more. Because, I mean, and I say this a lot, and I think that it's absolutely true, is corporations are, are amoral. They're not moral. They're not immoral. They're just amoral. They only search for the bottom line of profits. They're Obviously, we all know, we've discussed this before, they're people, because the U.S. has decided that they're people, but they're amoral people. You know, they don't care about, you know, if, if you know, how the workers are doing or if someone starves and dies, but... You know, they, they, they only care about the profit motive. So, I mean, what do you do about that kind of issue? Because that's 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 a particularly weird one. They're not forcing you to work overtime. They're getting you to to voluntarily work overtime in order to finish your tasks. And if you report them, then you're going to lose your job, obviously. And if you don't work the overtime, you also lose your job. Yeah, so there's, I think that's, you, there's you a have to legal cre- solution for that. I think... You have to create unions, and you have to create these peop- these these organizations that are going to fight for labor. You also have to vote for people that are going to fight for labor. I think yeah, it's not an easy to, thing. It's to create a kind of working class mentality in Taiwan. Yeah, for absolutely, that's definitely a huge thing. And I mean, I feel like that's probably developing. It's probably slow again because of what you very accurately pointed out earlier. It's just because of the the. It, quick industrialization of Taiwan and the fact that even even now people can go to university for relatively low cost. So One other it's big like you can though, you can still be an engineer or whatever. Go ahead. Is the is the role of in Taiwan of small and medium enterprise that there are so many small businesses that a, a lot of people if they really hate their employer, if they really hate their work, they'll just start a small business. And like because they have a strong family structure here, they can make shit money. They don't need to be like ultra profitable to survive. So that's what a lot of people do. It's kind of like an escape valve for this kind of stuff. Instead of, it's not like they have no option. It's not like they're going to go, you know, work in the poor house, like in 18th century, you know, yeah. London. Yeah. If they don't have money, then they'll go start start a small business, start a night market stand and go live, you know, stay at their parents' house. And if they make shit money, they make shit money. I will, I will say that, that is one thing that I really, I mean, I wish they would make more money. Um, but I do value that, and I think that is a very impressive thing about Taiwan is the fact that there are so many small businesses still very at, entrepreneurial, like, at, le- at, le- at least surviving, if not thriving, in Taiwan. Like the amount of just like, for instance, if you go to a small town, even the, the town where my parents live in the U.S., there are probably three restaurants, and two of them are international, not just national, international change chains. Uh, one of them is Subway. One of them Two is chains. McDonald's. Two chains. Um, but one, but, one thing that causes that also, Jordan, is the density. It, you have small towns in Taiwan. Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. look small to us, but those towns have thousands of people living in sure. like That's three square right. kilometers. Right. Small That's towns in the right. U.S. have like, yeah, you get the idea. A, th- the, a thousand the same people, yeah. People. I've, I've, li- I've lived in them. I've lived in towns of less than 300 people. Living in a in couple US, hundred square kilometers. Yeah. In, instead of three. Yeah, hundreds, hundreds of square kilometers. Yeah, exactly. So it's a lot easier to support these small businesses here because of the density. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a different situation. To compare the two outright is is, is probably would be not accurate. Um, but yeah, yeah, for sure. It's definitely different, but it makes me – that it just makes me happy, you know, when I see it's like, okay – I like that there are all these small businesses. I like that I can go to a, you know, if I want to buy, you know, hardware or I want to buy like something for my house, I don't need to go to, you know, IKEA or or you know some other international brand. I can just go to like a local place and like, they're probably stocking something that was made by an international brand. But at least I can, in proxy, support like this you know local person. It makes me feel a little bit better about those purchases. I agree with you on that. I'm not buying some fucking. Chinese made bullshit off a of fucking Taobao. At least I'm supporting like a, a, f- a fucking local worker, you know. So yeah, I don't know. It's 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 better. It's not perfect, and it's gonna take a lot of reform. And with the fact that like, you know, wages are not getting better and the birth rate is falling, like they're gonna have to figure out something. But I don't know. Hopefully, it's working in the right direction. I guess we'll see. Um, exactly. What we probably need to talk about 
at least briefly, we probably should wrap up pretty quick, but uh, we should probably touch on, like, the myriad of things going on in relation to Hong Kong. Oh. Pressure, pressure to put it at the end, but um, I don't remember even what we talked about in the last one. But I know we talked about the mask loss, and the mask law is obviously still going on. Um, Seems like uh, the protests and the violence, neither have died down. I heard that there, that uh, Xi Jinping is shopping for a new Carrie Lam, a new puppet. Yep. yep. But I don't know how accurate that is. It's all speculation. It's also, that's also speculation that I've heard. Um, there's been a lot of stuff coming out about Carrie Lam. Like, there's a picture that i just saw and i don't have any context for it but it was a, a there's a firefighter that died i believe in a fire in hong kong it's just a picture of his wife and daughter and then a picture of carrie lamb just with a huge shit-eating grin on her face and it's just like the the wife and child look so dejected and sad and it's just like you're just the fakest fucking puppet dictator ever aren't you like, she's so just fake. a tool of the elites there. I mean, it, she's she's bad, but she's not the worst, man. It's the elites that have poisoned the city. It's the it's the pro Beijing sure. traders who basically sold their city to the communists, you know, for Absolutely. for economic benefit. Like they they sold the fucking city, and now the the city is revolting, and they're like, you know, they're so confused. Uh, they, but they've wrought this. I mean, they they destroyed the city with their selfishness and with their greed. And now they're going to pay the consequence. They're washing exactly. their city burn to the ground. Exactly. And I think, I think you're right about that. I just want I would like people to know that she is very corrupt and will basically do whatever she, her masters tell her. Um, but yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It's this is every chief executive that Hong Kong has ever had has been corrupt. They are unelected. They're supported by the Chinese Communist Party. Basically, you know, put in there in place by them. They, they've got no accountability to the people whatsoever. They're only accountable to the elites of Hong Kong and the Communist Party. They're, they're tools. Yeah, and every conscious person in Hong Kong knows that. Every person I've seen from Hong Kong that's on Twitter talking about these issues has said about the shopping around that is a, a, allegedly going on for a, a new leader of Hong Kong has basically been saying, like, yeah, we'd like to see Carrie Lam go, but we know 100% that the next person is going to be this exact same. It and then, will and be that worse. we will fight them. And then we will fight them tooth and nail. Yeah. Yeah. It I would probably assume will. That the next one will probably be more willing to use force in order to show that they're kind of. Because that's what Beijing wants is, is for Hong Kong to basically settle this on their own so they don't have to intervene. So I wouldn't be surprised if a new person comes in and they think of new ways to crack down. Do you think that that's going to be a good idea? Do you think that that will be beneficial for the CCP in general and the Hong Kong government as a proxy of them? I think if – yeah, because I think that the Hong Kong government technically is capable of cracking down, uh, not fully suppressing it, but definitely um, I guess toning it down to some extent. Like to Toning down the violence or – Against protesters or or turning up the violence against toning, protesters? Toning down the, the visibility and the disruptiveness of the protests. That's what I mean. Turning down. The visibility and disruptive – not destructiveness, disruptiveness. How it disrupts – because that's that's the goal and it should be the goal. And I, of course, fully support yeah, for sure. the movement. But it, a lot of it is designed to disrupt the normal functioning of the city so that people can't just hide in their glass houses and ignore this from the hills. As they look down upon the proletariat, it's. I gotta it's very... say, I I don't I don't think that they can. I don't think that they can with the unless unless there are caveats to that because I think if they totally shut off the internet, but that may I think that also may endear people in a foreign capacity or people foreign people to support them more say like look at how far they're going they're shutting off the internet can you imagine if they shut off the internet in the united states we got to support these people i think honestly already... if they shut down the internet i mean they would never do that because the entire point of hong kong is like an experiment in like basically free market and and once they do that the business community in hong kong is gone if they shut down the internet for even a day the the, the notion that any foreign company will continue to to exist there is done they're they're 
The point is the financial center is done. They or cannot compete. They could, they, could do, they could do a great firewall type system. No, they can't. They can't because then they won't have open access to the outside world. In, in that case, they can't compete. This is why China is not a financial center. They fucking they simply can't compete with the rest of the well, world they're, because they're also they currently ble bleeding bleeding their reserve dollars right now. Like they're, I mean, this is all speculation, but the e economists that I follow, a lot of them on Twitter, are basically speculating that China is like very quickly headed towards a financial recession. I guess at least, uh, if not like a very big collapse or depression. Um, based on the fact that they like don't have a lot of reserve currency um you can look at like the numbers of people res re withdrawing like reserve currency and things like that and um recently uh today i believe there was that crash i think abby sent it there was that crash in the U uh, uk of like these chinese tourists basically riding in the back of a fucking like truck um and they died and that's very sad and i feel very terrible for them i wish that that would not have happened and i hope that their families you know are okay and like everything like that like that's a very this very upsetting situation but yeah. it just shows that for all the power that that the chinese government wields on this international stage like it's a lot of it is as you compared erdogan earlier it's like a it, it is a paper tiger man they're just they have a lot of bark but like they don't really have a lot of control for like they have a huge market and a lot of people are willing to appeal to them like um a thing that probably also should be discussed um is the bl the blizz uh, blizzard stuff this gaming company in the u.s for anyone that doesn't know i'll try to do a real quick uh discussion about it but it's like uh the bl blizzard is like a gaming company that has created things like like diablo is like a really big one that a lot of people might know um but they they basically there was a guy named blizz uh i can believe his his tag was Blizz Chung, and he came on screen after he won a tournament, uh, and I think it was Hearthstone, and put on a, a gas mask, um, and basically said like he did like the the slogans. It was a gaming tournament in Taiwan. I think we might have briefly talked about this in the last podcast, um, but he basically came on on screen, and both of the po the casters, the sh they call them shout casters, like these. Um, people that like covered the tournament like basically hid under the desk because they knew like what was happening and both of those people subsequently got fired which is really fucked up and they should both have given their jobs back um but he like came on and was like you know like you know fight for hong kong i forget he said like uh hong kong like man now i can't think of the slogan that they use it's like Five hong kong bands. no it wasn't that one there's like um what is it Hong kong smafu I, I I forget what it is, but anyway, like he 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 said a pro Hong Kong democracy slogan, and after that he got banned for a year uh, from competing, and he also got all his prize money taken away. Subsequently, they have come back and they have given his, I believe they gave his prize money back, and they cut. I can't remember if they cut his suspension, but he he either has a year or six months suspension. Uh, he initially had a year, so I can't remember if they cut his suspension, but they basically came back and blizzcon which is like their big conference is coming up in like a week so that's going to be very interesting to see if if a lot of people and i hope they do come out and boycott that shit and say you want to call yourself an american company you want to come like then show your values first like yeah we get it you're a company you're amoral you're a corporation you want to you know you you want to make your profits higher we'll make your profits higher if you show us that you're in favor of freedom same thing for the nba there's all these people going to these NBA games that were already going there. There's people, these groups on Twitter, um, they're obviously outside of Twitter, but I basically see them on Twitter, that are, like, selling these shirts that are, like, pro Hong Kong. I sent you that video of that little kid, like, dancing on the dance cam, and then he flashes, like, a, I forget if it was, like, a Rockets or Clippers jersey. He flashes it, and then he drops it and picks up a free Hong Kong shirt. I think it was on the back side. Like, he turned it around. That... It's he had just a pin like, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Like, that's good. Like, I love that stuff. And, like, people are wearing these shirts and, like, putting out this message. Like, it's going to spread, man. And I hope that people take it seriously. And when they see it, they don't just go, yeah, Hong Kong, cool. Like, yeah. All right. No, they, I hope they look into it and go, oh, all right. Like, this is, this is messed up. Like, this is really bad. We need to, like, 
support these these people that are literally out and they're going to work nine to five and then after they get out of work they go to the streets like we when we went to the when we went to hong kong we talked to numerous people where we were like hey when did you get out here and they're like oh i just got off work like i came out here like i i don't think a lot of people in the u.s can imagine that like imagine you go to your work in the morning get off at five and then you go to a you go to a protest after that and then the you you don't want to get caught by facial recognition software so you wear a mask but now the 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 government has banned masks so you go out there and like do you reveal your face because like maybe you get fired the next day well maybe you wear a mask and then the the hong kong police see you wearing a mask and they tackle you and beat the shit out of you like that's the reality these people are living in or you shut up and you basically get like taken over by china like that's that's an unbelievable situation to be in. Like, Futureless. It's insane, man. People need to start caring about this stuff, whether it's in the small sense of, like, you know, sharing a South Park episode and talking about it and just getting slightly interested in it, or it's, like, you know, whatever it is, financially supporting these protests. It's, like, we gotta, we gotta get moving on some of this stuff. Like, this is not a joke, and it's quickly devolving. But anyway, I just ran it for way too long. <laughs> it's got to happen at least once an episode is kind of what I do. Is there anything else you want to talk about or anything that you think I misstated or you want to add to what I just said? Because I just talked for so oh. long. I feel bad now. All right. Let's wrap it up then. I've been going for an hour and a half, and I talked for the last 30 minutes of that. No, I was like two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. Yeah. I try to. I try to, when I ran, I try to talk faster now so I don't spend so much time i don't want to waste everyone's time uh-huh. but i do think that stuff is important go support hong kong don't forget to support free china post we're out here yes doing our thing. hell yeah hopefully maybe not too long i'm going to try to set up a patreon or something so if we can get some because if we can get funds we can i can take more time off i mean you got to get you got to get that permanent residency i got to get that permanent residency after that if we can get some Money flowing in, we can spend more time writing articles and also spend more time renewing the going, server. like going places. Yeah, renewing the server. We gotta get that stuff up. Well, if we have a bigger server space and a more assured server space, we can share more stuff with you guys, like these democratic debates that we'll probably put up. We um, can share that. I think we can share that. All right, we'll do that for y'all. But yeah, we gotta. Maybe we can take more go more trips to Hong Kong and do more interviews and stuff let you guys see the stuff going on on the ground you shouldn't use the word trips you should use the word uh, journalistic inter- international reporting alright yeah I mean that's what it is it's a trip to do reporting increase our international coverage yeah we're trying to we're trying to cover this Asia stuff also I'd be able to like not work six days a week so I could like go to these I want to go to some of these Han rallies man and talk to these people that are still going out to support Han it's really interesting because everyone in Galshan is like where the hell is he because he's always doing these rallies in the fucking north and he's like not doing anything even one of my students today she's not old enough to vote I don't think she cares about Han she's just like it's too fast like it would be fine if he like was president later but he needs to be the mayor first like he hasn't done anything he's never here well, not not to mention he just he just like took a he's like taking a sabbatical to like do rallies and stuff and didn't he just asked Tsai Ing-wen to take time off too. He was like, "Oh, I'm taking time off. You should take time off too." And she's like, "What? Fuck you. <laughs> like I'm not going to take time off. I'm fucking the president." Asshole. Yeah, he's a real he's a real piece of work. He's, he's a real piece yeah. of work. He's a piece of work. He's interesting interesting guy and i hope no one that i know votes for him he should get there was a recent poll that i thought i saw that said like it was like it was obviously like a, it was like a taiwan news poll so it's like probably not even a lot of taiwanese people because it's an english language thing but it's like 99 percent of people voted in the poll and said like taiwan's his role his run for presidency is silly and like one percent think that it's like a realistic thing unlike it is but it's like on an english website right yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's not, yeah. it's not, it's so not a scientific poll. I would say like any stretch of the zero point zero zero five percent of the people who took the poll actually have the right to vote here. 
I'd say it's within the margin of error. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's what I'm saying is it doesn't matter, but even the people who I know that are at least not rabid KMT supporters, but K- generally KMT supporters that I know, they've been like, yeah, he's kind of a joke. He's kind of a joke. So. <laughs> I did my, yesterday, uh, we were talking about like policies. So one of my classes, um, I forget what we were talking about. It was like either pollution, anyway, pollution or traffic or something like that. Oh, potholes, uh-huh. potholes. So they were supposed yeah. to write a whole bunch of solutions on the board. So one of the solutions was change the mayor. <laughs> and I, I like made them vote yeah. like on each of these issues to see what they think the best solution is from like one suggested by the students in class. And like they all, everyone in the class, every single student in the class just like shot their hands up. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, even the ones that I wouldn't expect, like, young and old alike, like, everyone. He's just, it's its amazing how quickly he went from this faux, and I don't want to go to another rant here, but I think there's a, like, people have a big problem with populism, and that book that you lent me, I think, has a big problem with populism. And I don't think that populism is the issue. I think populism is actually like a good thing, in my opinion. I've had discussions with people about this before, but well, I don't think populism is the problem. Let me get let, let me say this real quick. I don't think populism is the problem, but I think the problem is is faux populism. When you pre- like Donald Trump is a faux populist. He talks about oh, I want to make you know things afford- affordable. Excuse me, and I want to make you know people pay living wages. Like those are populist issues. Bernie Sanders is a populist. He's in favor of what the populists are in favor of. Probably 90... F- Go ahead. My perception of populism is anti-elitism. Okay. I guess what in I that sense, consider- Donald Trump is... Yeah, I would agree with you. He's not... He's not he, it's the whole thing. He's like, I'm going to get re- drain the swamp. I'm going mm-hmm. to... You know, I'm going to make government work for you. Blah, blah, blah. And he hasn't fucking done any of that shit. He's just filled mm-hmm. it with billionaires. So I agree with, with the yeah. principle there. But I think that populism in and of itself, it, not anti-elitism, but the idea that the elites have too much power, I, I agree with you. I mean, there's there's a lot of validity there. I and, think populism is just, at least in my view, and maybe this is a, maybe I don't fully understand populism, but what my idea of populism would be is just to be in favor of what the normal people, the regular people, the populace are in favor of. So, yeah, but again, t- like I said, like Bernie Sanders is in favor of, like, most of his policies are over 50 most of them over 60 percent in the american people are in favor of you you're right but i mean the elites would say that the populace doesn't really know what they want and not only that but that they're fickle and that like a demagogue could easily change their minds about what they want so yeah today they want medicare for all and and tomorrow you know they want to burn all the muslims or something crazy like that like that that you can't really trust people that's the that's the elitist sentiment and that that you need to find some kind of balance. I mean, that book was written by elitists who basically saying that the entire premise yeah. of the book, and that's why I criticize it, is that there's too much democracy. And I, I completely disagree. I'd say as America yeah. still has far too little. But yeah, I would 100 percent. I would 100 percent agree with your with your statement on that. I think we don't have enough democracy, and I think. But at least have a role. Get, at least yeah, have and a I, I think there should be there should role. be. There, be, there should be leaks. checks. Yeah, there should be checks on the on the majority, but I think in general the people, the people, I think the people don't know how to articulate what they want sometimes. But I think that the people do know what they want. They don't want to. The normal citizens don't want to pay more in taxes because they're already taxed. Their taxes are increasing over the next ten years with the Donald Trump tax cuts, quote unquote tax cuts, tax raise. It, it should be a tax cut for the rich, tax increase for the middle and lower classes. People want Medicare for all. People want health care. They don't want to be going into medical debt. People want affordable college at least, if but not here's free the college. Thing, I, I know I get all what you're saying, but one of the issues is that typically when you when you look at like mass movements and populism, they also, because of its nature, focus on short sighted aims in order to help the population and ignore the long term consequences of what some of those programs do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, in some, yeah, I guess I would in some ways agree with that, but that's why you have... Stimulus checks, short-term, short-term tax cuts, but not, like, long decades-long infrastructure spending, not, like, you know, 
national roads programs. There's not a lot of ambition. There's a lot of a lot of easy money, and not a lot of long term planning. That's what it seems like the the flaw with a lot of populism is. Just like Duterte, yeah. I'm gonna solve the drug problem in six months. I mean this yeah. this is like endemic of the the worst excesses of populism. So what does he do in order to fill these short term goals? He kills thousands of people. Yeah. You know. I would say I would say maybe yeah maybe there are arguments that those are actually quote unquote real populist, but I would say that you that's why you need to have one an educated public, and that's why we should have things like at least affordable college. But I would argue we should just have free college. We have free K through twelve college or th- free K through twelve education that didn't used to be always the case. So we should have free K through twelve education, and we should also have free college. Um, and you want to talk about you know we can have the argument that we've had before about you know repay uh forgiving student loan debt or however you want to do that but at least just in the future like if i have to pay off all my student loan debt but it means that everyone in the future doesn't have to pay student loans or at least can have you know you need to pay a thousand dollars a year and you can go to college i'm okay with that i'll pay off my student loans that's fine um and you create a min uh, you know a, a live a minimum wage that's a living wage and so that the people that do have these sorts of debts they can pay them off okay cool then we can have an, a, you know, some sort of discussion about these, you know, the the minutia of these of these plans and stuff. But when you have people living on the the boot of these big corporations, like, of course they're going to be like, yeah, I want, I just want it to all be gone because they, you know, people are committing suicide because they're going into debt or they, you know, there are people that like Bernie Sanders l- literally talked a man down from suicide in one of his rallies because he was like. I'm a fucking financial burden to my family because I have so much medical debt. I'm going to kill myself. And he, he talked about it. He's like, no, 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 no. Like, we're going to get you out of this. Like, we're going to deal with this. Like, that's ridiculous to me in the largest economy, the fucking quote-unquote greatest democracy on, that has ever graced the face of the earth. Like, these things should not be happening. So, yeah, I, I get some of the arguments against populism, but... I think that that's just a it it even more accentuates these these issues that we have with the current system. I think it's just even more of a uh, just an obvious critique of this the current system that we have that that we have a a populace that is so uneducated about po- political ideology and just like the you know the facts on the ground and things like that. I don't know. All right. You have you, you should respond. I feel like I I went on a rant again. Stop letting me do that. I feel like I just black I got, out. I, like I got nothing to say, man. All right. Well, you we'll we'll listen back to this, and if you have something to respond, you should. Because I feel okay. like I just sometimes I just black out, and I'm just like fuck. I've been talking for like ten minutes. I need to shut the fuck up and actually have a conversation. Um. All right. We'll we'll cut this one off. Uh. We really appreciate you guys listening. Hopefully I'll edit this down, throw in a couple of drops, and we'll be about an hour and a half, but it might be a little over. But we did it big. We've been put. We've been doing more podcasts recently. I'm so fucking hyped about it, man. I'm so glad we've been doing podcasts recently. I'm gonna have to spend less time editing this because you got a good mic. Um, but don't forget to go share our pod. Follow yeah. follow free free China Post on all the all the social medias. Ari's been coming with the the hot shit, so you should follow. Our individual Twitters and stuff too. It's, oh, it's okay. You've been coming with the hot takes. I don't know, man. You got you you got a a Twitter blow up recently. If you have more of those, you should sub you should subtweet it, and you should just be like follow follow for you trying to post. I'm just trolling, man. I'm just trolling. I know you're troll a little little, but like some of your stuff is good, man. It's fun. It's fun to see. It makes me happy. And you make the Umau angry, and anyone that makes Umau angry so means so many it. people angry. <laughs> Man, I remember because you showed me that tweet, and like the first response to you was just like, it was like broken English. It was just like, well, I don't even remember what it said. It was just like, it was like fuck you, but like they said it like in broken English. I was like, how did you fuck that up? Man, they're all like, lots of people are like nine eleven. I love nine eleven. That like. I got like thirty. Oh, I love yeah. 9-11s. Like, geez. that's been like a that's been like a big thing recently. It's like these Chinese people. But see, this is the thing; they just make their country look bad. Like these, it's like they they send all these like umau, and it's just like 
you're just making your country look bad. Like, no one should like 9-11. That's terrible. Like, even if you dislike the U.S., which I have a number of critiques, I say them all the time about the U.S., I think that we have a lot of problems with our foreign policy and foreign wars. Like, I think I, I'll critique them all day. But 9-11 was terrible. It killed every one of the people killed in that. Whether they were, like, not, like, a nice person, they didn't deserve to get fucking murdered. Yeah. And Saudi Arabia should, should you know, what I, I won't get into it. But, like, that's, it's fucked up. That's bad. And if you're going, like, to do oh, I'm so, shit. I'm so happy about 9-11. You're a bad person. You're bad. They're bad and, like, people probably, for being traitors to their, to, for their government for going on that site in the first place. Twitter is not allowed in China. If you're going to go yep. on a site that's banned in your fucking country to defend your shithole government that banned it in the first place, then you have a serious fucking logical problem. And, like, there's not much to say to you to begin with, honestly. Agreed. That's that would be, agreed. like, uh, I mean, that would be, like, I, I can't even understand it. I can't even understand how they, how they can legitimize that in their own heads. This is, like, logical gymnastics that I can't imagine. So I it's, yeah, I don't really have much to say to them. Absolutely. I think that's a, I think it's a very well-articulated point, and I think that's where we should just wrap it up. So okay, uh, bye-bye. Make sure, to, make sure to piss off your local Umau. Don't forget to follow us on blah, 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 blah. But we love y'all, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.